Cells need energy to evade entropy and stay alive. This energy is extracted from breaking and connecting chemical bonds from the molecules we eat. Sugars are very important fuel molecules. Glycolysis is one of the main routes by which all cells begin to consume them to absorb their energy to produce ADPs and reduced NADH. Cells absorb carbohydrates through glucose transporters. This protein works by passive transport, so glucose flows from higher to lower concentration. If both sides begin to have the same concentration the flow slows down, because some carbohydrates return to the outside of the cell with the same probability they go in. Once both sides contain the same glucose concentration, equilibrium is reached and flow stops. But the cell solves this problem by converting the glucose that enters into another molecule, immediately emptying the glucose molecules inside. This reaction is carried out by the protein hexokinase. It uses an ATP to donate a phosphate to glucose, converting it into glucose 6-phosphate. The reaction is not reversible, to reverse this reaction you need another protein. The protein needs a magnesium ion to function, the reason for this is that it needs to move the electrons of the ATP phosphates to change its electrical potential. This makes it easier for the oxygen electrons to bind and form a covalent bond with the phosphate nucleus. As we can see in the animation, the red parts are parts with more electrons and have a negative charge in relation to the blue parts where there are almost no electrons. The magnesium ion with a positive charge of 2 attracts electrons from phosphates exposing the nucleus, making it easier for orbitals of other atoms to easily penetrate the phosphate nucleus. This protein is competitively inhibited by its own product, glucose 6-phosphate, thus self-regulating its energy expenditure. The second reaction of glycolysis is carried out by the protein glucose 6-phosphate isomerase. Two of them bind together to form a dimer. The reaction opens the glucose ring and changes it from hexagonal to pentagonal, converting it to fructose 6-phosphate and vice versa. The enzymatic reaction is reversible and flows in both directions depending on the concentration of its metabolites. The third protein in glycolysis is phosphofructokinase, four of them bind to form a tetramer. This adds more precision to its allosteric regulation since each protein cooperatively affects the others. Phosphofructokinase is like a molecular computer that detects the levels of different molecules and decides if the time is right for the breakdown of sugar. For example, when the concentration of ADP and AMP rise and ATP decreases, the cell needs to produce ATP so the enzyme is activated. And on the other hand, when ATP reaches a desired concentration and ADP and AMP decrease, it reduces its activity. This is why this protein is the main point of glycolysis regulation. Glucose 6-phosphate and fructose 6-phosphate are used in other metabolic pathways. But when phosphofructokinase adds a second phosphate to the sugar, it commits itself to breaking down completely. The reaction is very similar to hexokinase, the enzyme also uses a magnesium ion to facilitate the reaction, and it is not reversible. Then the protein aldolase follows, four of them form a tetramer. And this protein is what begins the breakdown process, splitting fructose into two very similar three carbon carbohydrates, dehydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. The enzyme uses the amine group of the amino acid lysine to bind to fructose and initiate the reaction through an exchange of covalent bonds. The reaction is reversible, the enzyme can take the two products and reconnect them in fructose 1,6-phosphate. The next protein is triose phosphate isomerase, two of them bind to form a dimer. For this stage of glycolysis, glucose is already split in two. To save energy in molecules, it would be more efficient for the two molecules to follow the same metabolic pathway, so this protein converts dehydroxyacetone into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. The protein triose phosphate isomerase is a perfect enzyme, its enzymatic rate speed is at its maximum. There is no way it can evolve to be faster, the reaction occurs immediately when the substrate reaches the protein. This reaction is also reversible. 
The next protein is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase, four of them bind to form a tetramer. After this stage, energy begins to be extracted from the molecules. The enzyme adds a phosphate to glycerol, 3-phosphate to convert it to 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate and at the same time an NAD molecule steals two electrons to become NADH in its reduced form. These electrons will be used in other reactions that require energy and also to form covalent bonds. At this stage an ATP is synthesized, the protein phosphoglycerate kinase transfers a phosphate from 1,3-bisphosphoglyceric acid to an ADP, to convert them into ATP and 3-phosphoglycerate. The reaction requires the absence of water to be carried out accurately, so the protein closes to isolate it. The eighth reaction is carried out by the protein phosphoglycerate mutase, four of them bind to form a tetramer. The protein uses two manganese ions to hold and change the electrostatic potential of phosphates. In this reaction, the phosphate of carbon-3 is changed to carbon-2 to form 2-phosphoglycerate and be able to access the oxygen of the third carbon in the next reaction. This reaction is reversible. The ninth reaction is carried out by the protein phosphoglycerate enolase, two of them bind together to form a dimer. In this reaction, oxygen is extracted from the molecule to form phosphenolpyruvic acid. Two magnesium ions are used for this reaction, one serves to hold the molecule in place and the other to carry out the reaction. The reaction is reversible. The last reaction is carried out by the protein pyruvate kinase, four of them bind to form a tetramer. The protein takes phosphenol pyruvate and passes its phosphate to an ADP forming ATP and pyruvate. The reaction requires a manganese ion and is not reversible. The protein is allosterically inhibited by ATP and is activated by fructose bisphosphate. These 10 proteins make up the glycolysis pathway. When the cell expends energy it expends its ATPs and to recover them the protein phosphofructokinase is activated. This opens the flow for glucose molecules to be converted into pyruvate and chemical energy in the form of ATPs and reduced NADH. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe for more content.